Hey, Wranglers, how you doing? So you want to be a vampire, huh? That's what we're talking about today. Anyway, um, if you like the channel, like and subscribe and tell your friends. That's the best thing you could do for me. I'm kind of in a, um, what you call it, a uh, subscription drive here. And that's all I ask is just, you know, like the channel and subscribe. Tell your friends. That's the end of my sales pitch. Now let's talk about uh, real vampires here. <sighs> or supposedly real vampires. Let's take a look at one. This is the National Geographic here. This is Don Henry. Don Henry. I am a vampire. No, you're not. I do consume human blood. Okay, consuming human blood doesn't make you a vampire. Human blood is a tissue. Blood is considered a, t a tissue, like uh, muscle tissue or anything like that. What you are is a cannibal. If you're drinking human blood, you're a cannibal, okay? You're like a mosquito. Not, not that mosquitoes are cannibals or a leech. It's just something that drinks blood those are <laughs> more of a vampire than this guy will ever be but no he drinks human blood and that does not make you a vampire neither does dressing like this but let's take a look at this guy there is a real live community that exists not only within the states but also with throughout the world now he's got his rings he's got his costume and all that he's He's talking about his real life community that exists all over the world of these people. Okay. According to Henry, oh, now he's doing some he magic. His kind do not prey on the innocent. Well, these days we don't go ripping people's throats out or anything like that. Um, you never did. I'm quite mature with what we do. Okay, these days we don't rip out people's throats. Okay, he's never ripped out anybody's throat. He's not an immortal being. He's none of that. A vampire. In all, a real vampire, okay, if we want to say that, is an undead revenant that inhabits a human corpse that feeds on the living, okay? And they're not sexy. They're a predator, a supernatural predator on the living. And, uh, you know, they can, you know, we, we know basically what a real vampire in our head, or not a real vampire, but uh, the vampire legends tell us about them. And uh, these people like to pretend that they're something like that. They want you to think that, but they're not. But they dress like that, okay? And uh, they, you know, there we go. We keep things within doors. You we keep don't go the out you know, searching for victims or anything like that. Victims. Henry claims he will only drink from consenting donors. Mm -hmm. But clearly, there are others who aren't so considerate. All right, now this, this other case here is um, one where a girl was kidnapped. She was hitchhiking, which you shouldn't do. She got basically kidnapped and some guy changed her in a bathtub for a while and was just you know extracting blood from her and she escaped and got away that's what this case is about here um and um that's that's the long and short of that case there so what we'll do is um uh deal with that but no he uh these people that think they're vampires just aren't again they're cannibals and uh let's go back a little bit and uh look at mr don henry um, oops, sorry. This is Don Henry. Here he comes I out. am a vampire. I do consume human blood. There is a real live community that exists not only within the states, but also with throughout the world. He's got his nails done. He's got his jewelry on, all that. He basically looks like a dollar store version of Cher, except I think Cher is a lot more attractive. <laughs> okay, so we've got that. Now, um, when you we're talking about this, he's not the only one. We've got, uh, at least his name is Don Henry. A lot of them pick these silly names. Now, here's one that uh, um, I want to show you. This is New Orleans, New Louisiana, Orleans, 2019. This guy with the do-rads of vampire or bandana. My name is Belfazar Shani son. Most of my friends call me Zar. Hey guys. 54 years old. Been drinking blood since I was 11. Yeah, and, right. And uh, a sanguine vampire. Uh-huh. He's another vampire buddy, I guess. At 11 years old, things started changing for me. I was short, round, and always sickly. And one of my uncles that was big and tall and strong was picking on us, me and my sister. Balthazar is still and sickly. He's got a big old hematoma snap. on the side of his face. And I went charging. Or and he was fat, bigger and stronger you know, and pinned my arms down to my side. And then I just kind of reared my head back and bit him. Okay. 
he was wearing a coat. I bit through the coat, through his shirt, and into his flesh enough that I could actually taste blood, mm -hmm. like lots of blood. Yeah, I'm sure he said he could taste blood, lots of blood. I'm sorry, no, you didn't bite through his coat, you didn't bite through his shirt, and if you did get to his flesh, he says you could taste lots of blood, and he's gonna talk about when it hits his tongue and all that. I think the fabric would have absorbed it, because I don't care how hard you bite. Um, he, you know, his, his uncle he says was tormenting him and his sister. They're probably just goofing around like a regular uncle does. And he's a little punk kid, lost his mind. Probably, probably did bite his uncle, but I doubt there is any blood involved. But now he'll go on and explain this. Once that blood hit my tongue, it was like I suddenly came alive. Mm -hmm. Do I really need the blood? No. I do. No. And I'm gone without for lengths of time just to see what would happen. I'm the kind of person that it physically shows on. My skin will get ashy. My eyes will be dull and glazed. It literally physically shows on me. You get ashy skin. Your eyes get dull and glazed. It sounds more like a hangover than from drinking blood drinking human blood isn't really gonna do anything to you it's gonna pass through your system you're not gonna get a ton of nourishment from it you know again he's a cannibal he's not a vampire and he's wandering around new orleans and um he talks about this and that and the other and uh it's a big party town so i'm sure that when his ashy skin is all glazed up or in his eyes are all glazed he's probably had too many yards of margaritas or whatever the hell so what are some of the common misconceptions? Misconceptions. How about holy water gets me wet, garlic tastes good on pizza, stick a steak through anything's heart and it will die. I do not sleep in a coffin. I have a king size bed, thank you very much. Unlike mythical vampires who can turn themselves into bats, modern day vampires admit to having to obey physical laws. Because he can't exactly Looks like they can do some card tricks and do some tarot cards or whatever. If we fly in through someone's bedroom window for a quick bite, Balthazar has devised sanitary methods oh, good, to suck good. blood from his victims. He <sighs> finds victims. They're not victims. Who are willing to feed him. They're volunteers. Victims. Oh, hello. He's got this I'd guy. like to think I have a pretty good grasp on human vampirism after now 10 years of doing field work. I'm sorry, doctor, but you did your field work and you don't realize they're cannibals. The only thing that real vampires are more secretive about than themselves are their donors. They have to hide in the shadows because almost no one ever believes them when they say that they feel the need to consume human blood. Right. Well, I don't believe them and nobody should because they don't need it. But it's fun, isn't it? Just to dress up and play, play vampire. Um, he's not dressed, decked out like a, uh, you know, 18th century dandy, like uh, most of these guys are, but uh, he he does do that. I mean, he, he, he likes to play. They use a clean technique. I'll clean the area on the donor. Honestly, alcohol swabs always leave a funny taste afterwards. I make sure that the blade is new every time. You ready? Ready. More often than not, I'll use the back side of the shoulders. I poke a series of holes, and those holes actually provide me enough. There we go. You ready? Yeah. Oh, gross. So um, you suck in guys' shoulders. You go around and say, I don't know. You, you want to get your shoulders sucked? Go right ahead. If you got somebody who's willing to have their shoulders sucked, it sounds a little, it's just, uh, uh, how should I say it? It's kind of uh, goofy. But <laughs> I've never had my shoulders sucked, but and I never will. So I hope, I hope, God, I hope I never do. Uh, I'm sure not going to go play vampire, I can tell you that much. But anyway, That's now listen to this. Bad. Sweeter taste. You've been getting fatty acids again. Oh, that's good. I can tell when people are a little bit low on their magnesium and potassium. I can tell when they're not getting enough fatty acids. And because of the flow, I can also tell if they're not drinking enough. As a psychologist, I think we're talking about people caught up in a story, there caught up go. in a kind of melodramatic ritual 
people will go into cosplay and other uh, dramas because it's creative and it makes them feel special and it is very imaginative. Okay, it's it's not creative at all. They're all they kind of imitate each other. Okay, they dress up, but that psychologist is a hundred percent right. They're they're playing out a little story in their heads, but they they want to project that they're these immortal, romantic, immortal beings, and uh, just like right out of the Anne Rice book, I think that's probably why they all congregate in New Orleans because that's where the book said. You know, Anne Rice's uh, interview with a vampire took place down there in the American South, and and whatnot so we, we got this guy now um let me show you some more vampires okay these are these ones are pretty funny oh that's a picture whoops hang on i'll get to her in a minute okay we got one more video to look at i think it speaks for itself um and uh get your own opinion here i'll comment of course curiously there are self-described vampires still living in the world today, and they're not rampaging through the Carpathian Mountains in Eastern Europe. They should be. They live in Slough, to the west of London, and their names, Arrow Draven and Leah Benninghoff. Arrow Draven. Listen. There's vampires everywhere. Vampires can be doctors, nurses, solicitors, bank managers, mechanics. Dorks. Someone working in a local supermarket, your friends, your family. No. We could be anyone. No. When I first saw that he was a vampire, it was <laughs> very interesting. I was like, OK, didn't know there was actually proper real vampires He's out there. I've always vampire. hoped there was. And to finally meet one was actually very interesting, to finally get to know what it really is and everything, what the lifestyle's like and everything like that. and drinking each other's blood, that kind of intimate connection to it. But really, there's no benefit from it. It basically goes through your body, and then it's expelled. Remember there's no actual said? health benefit to it. And actually, it could be dangerous if you're taking high levels of blood into your system because you could overdose on iron. But in terms of blood transfusions, that's different. I mean, that's obviously, that's a bad. necessary medical something. procedure. There is a benefit to that. But that's a completely separate issue than drinking blood. Leah says that she can remember the exact moment that Arrow turned her into a vampire, and she drank human blood for the first time. Looks like tomato juice. He turned me into a vampire. It had to be at night at 3 a.m. in the morning, the witching hour. And really, it all consisted of he drank my blood, and then I drank his blood like a sort of a cycle feed. The vampire culture has um, <laughs> people we call we class as donors, who are people who willingly allow us to feed from them. Oh, my God. You, no so, self-awareness. Like I say, there are some, I'm sure, out there who would try and take it by force, but most of us believe in, you know, respecting other people's wishes, other people's bodies. We don't do anything to harm others or... You know, even for whether it's for our own benefit or anything else. Okay, there we go. We, we our vampire couple, very nice couple. It seems like um, maybe too nice to be vampires. Let me show you a couple of more uh, images here. Um, she's a good example. She looks like she should be in a band. I think I, I'd, I'd go see a bit. That's what these people all ought to do is just start forming these va vampire bands. I think that would be cool to hear that kind of stuff. You know, all over New Orleans instead of that. Uh, you know, trombone jazz stuff. I'm not a big fan of that Dixieland jazz. Um, but no, she she looked cool. But again, attention seeking behavior. You know, she wants attention. She wants to play. She wants to it's live in a fantasy world. So, hey, that's what she's doing. And um, well, hopefully it's uh, it's safe for her and for her. her excuse, sorry, for her. Um, what do you call them? Her victims. OK, now this last guy here. Oops. Let's take a look at this last guy. And I'll turn her off. Oh, I love this guy. <laughs> Baron Von Golo. Okay, here's one of those names. He's a protester. He was protesting the um, Vampire Diaries and, and Twilight 
that you know didn't like him. I guess he, they were wrong about vampires. He 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 knows better. So he was protesting, and you can see his contacts and his his uh, <laughs> his Gomez Adams mustache, and is basically just uh, a whole pile of cringe right here. But he's a you know in every freaking hobby, even this vampire hobby, um, let's call it that for right now, uh, the cannibalistic thing. Uh, there's gatekeepers. This guy's a good example of the gatekeeper. So, um, yeah, he knows he, he, he can tell you about that. You know, the vampire's got to fit his definition and what he wants. And, uh, you know, he's going to let you know it, but, um, Ooh, <laughs> like I said, this guy is a whole pile of cringe. I don't know. They stack cringe that high, you know? And, uh, so any Baron Von Golo or Gulo, I don't know how to say it. I don't care how to say it. It's just a silly name. If you're going to name yourself something like that, Gulo is not really what I would name myself. It'd be something like a lot cooler. But anyway, um, you don't see any, uh, uh, they're all, you know, either dressed like modern goths or the modern dandies or whatever. Um, you don't see anybody in a Greek tunic. Um, that guy was, that one guy was kind of Western looking. He had the hat and the skulls on his shoulder. I think that was pretty, actually pretty cool. I liked that suit, but um, again, you know, he's just a direct, and he had some face paint. He looked pretty cool, but um, if I was going to be a vampire, maybe I'd be a medieval, I'd try to, you know, be a vampire for the medieval ages and dress around, walk around in plate mail, and you know, like Sauron or something like that and, and creep some people out. But anyway, that is... Um, our vampire uh, culture today. Again, I think I've explained it pretty well. Oh, oh, God, one thing I wanted to say is overdosing on iron is bad, okay? Getting too much iron in yourself is bad. Let me tell you why. I, I had to get iron when I was in the hospital, and it makes your shit stink so bad when you get too much iron, you would not believe it. I mean, you take a crap and you want to run out of the damn bathroom, it smells so bad. So, you know, if they're sitting there, one thing you can guarantee, if you find yourself a vampire boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, you better wait 35, 45 minutes before you go back in the bathroom after them. Because if they're drinking all that iron, man, I tell you what, it's going to, whoo, you're going to need some of that air, air freshener. Um, so anyway, hey guys, thanks again. Um, like, like and subscribe if you dig it and tell your friends. And this is the Neon Wrangler. And next time I'm going to talk about some historical vampire cases. That'll be fun. You guys take care, behave, and don't, uh, don't go hungry.